R-O-U-B-L-E. You know, it's quite a deliberate um, thing to actually expand and grow from beyond my initial beginnings as even like a, I guess I started as a, a, a choir girl in a, in a Catholic school choir. Remember the sun, remember the wine. And then to this point now where we've sort of doing sort of weird electronica and I've sort of turned into this fruity rapper. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's, I'm not surprised by it. I'm, I'm glad that I've done it and keep changing because, um, you know, I'd get pretty bored and I think everyone else would get pretty bored if they were, you know, listening to the same old shit for, for a decade, you know. <laughs> So we made the really heavy rock and roll record with Design Desire um, and we toured that really heavily and extensively for about a year. It also took a year to make, which is you know a long time to be just focusing on one thing. Yes. By that stage I just kind of didn't want to play rock and roll anymore. Um, it would have been really inauthentic of me to keep pushing it because people were going to buy it or were expecting it. Um, and I saw like, you know, Kanye West heaps on that tour and I was really impressed by just the the power of this sort of, I guess, modern poet um, with like this really um, crazy um, musical genius behind it. Um, and then I sort of started to get into like Azalea Banks and, um, you know, I've always loved uh, more electronic uh, leaning stuff like um, Porter's Head and Massive Attack. So it sort of became a, a new influence and old influence combining. Um, but definitely it was kind of a, a combination of being a bit tired of of the rock and roll shtick and, and needing to do something new. We're two songs away from finishing and then we're going to work out how to blend all the tracks so that it becomes like a bit of a, a trip instead of just a song by song delivery and we want it to be like um, a kind of a weird modern um, you know like the way that you listen to Dark Side of the Moon and you know depending on what you've consumed or, or what headspace you're in it takes on a whole different trip to um, you know the last time you listen to it so we're going to do a lot of sort of trippy production on it and lots of weird segues and things between the songs so we have quite a bit of work left to do even though there's only two songs to record <laughs> i think like we've all gone a little bit my producer and co-writer sam ford you know we both sort of lost our mind a bit like it sounds like a bit dramatic but it, it it's so intense just delivering especially because the songs are born out of like a pretty big heartbreak that i i endured um it becomes this weird therapeutic thing, like a catharsis, and um, you know, you, you end up going pretty deeply into these things because otherwise it's not authentic. And um, I definitely slipped off the edge a bit and, and indulged a little too much in, in alcohol to sort of deal with it. Um, and luckily, I had Sam to, to sort of pull me back. And then whenever he got so overworked that he lost his mind, you know, I could pull him back. So we got this great um, partnership, you know, there where if I was doing it alone, it just would never have happened. Um, so it's been intense um, and I'm really looking forward to it, it being done yeah. but then of course we have to just start doing the next one yeah. <laughs> but what else would we do? Yeah. <laughs>